speak again their immortal tale, the Hola. It was a dark house, dreary too. Shadows crept down the walls like loathsome vermin. The house was old and filled with memories of better days, like the man who lived there. He was old and gnarled and alone. He'd pass the lonely hours by sitting on the porch of his home, watching the boats sail up and down the river. He was happy living alone in that old house, until one day a tall, three-rigged Brazilian schooner floated past his shores, casting a shadow on the banks of the river. A shadow over the old house. A shadow over the old man. A living shadow which crept into his mind. He wrote a letter to his young cousin, Madame René Sable, who was living in Paris, begging her to visit him. She read the letter over several times, then took it to a friend of hers, a doctor, Dr. Perron, to ask his advice. She was young and in Paris. And she didn't believe in the old man. I have to come to you, Dr. Perron, because this letter worries me so. You've known my cousin, Gabrielle Bouvet, for a long time, and he's not the sort of man given to hallucinations. He seems to be a very sound old man. But living alone the way he does... Oh, nonsense. Living alone has nothing to do with it. Well, suppose you read me the letter, Madame Sarr. Of course. It all seems like so much poppycock. Listen. Be honored by a visit from you at your earliest convenience. <laughs> Isn't that like him? Yes, very much. <laughs> You'll find me a changed man, my dear. Changed because he has come. You don't know what I'm talking about, and so I must explain. A shadow has crept into my home, a shadow which dominates me. You see what I mean, Doctor. Well, read on, Renee. Right. He is a creature from a land of shadows, but I tell you he does live. He lives here with me, and I'm afraid of him. Oh, Rene, he will dominate all of mankind, just as mankind has dominated the animal kingdom. We will become his chattel, his food, and his slave, as the animals become ours. You see, Doctor? Yes, indeed I do. I wonder... Rene, how soon can you pack and be ready to leave? In about two hours. Well, fine. I'll have the horse and buggy hitched and call for you then. I think we'd better go down to him as soon as possible. Uh, Doctor, surely you don't believe in this, this invisible creature. Well, surely, Rene, I don't doubt the wind just because I can't see it. We'll be able to judge better after we have a talk with him. You better hurry home. I'm going right down to the stables now. It's been a long trip, Doctor. I hope we don't frighten my cousin by coming at this hour. That's his house right over there, isn't it? Yes, right at the end of the road. Huh. Gloomy looking old place. Very gloomy. It's so dark and so very old. Tell me, how long has Bouvet's wife been dead? About six years now. Did you notice any perceptible change in him after she died? Mm, nothing exceptional. Except he became quieter and drew into himself more, mm -hmm. if that's possible. Well, here we are. Yeah. Oh, there, boy. Oh, And so the doctor and the old man's cousin, René Sub, entered the old house, expecting to find a man weakened by illness, haggard with lack of sleep. But instead, Gabriel Bouvet was in high spirits as he conducted his guests into the house. He made a special pot of tea, and then as he passed the cream and sugar. Take your tea, René. Stop being so nervous. Fidget, fidget. Always were a fidgety youngster. Makes me nervous. You were talking about the Brazilian boat, Monsieur Bouvet. What has the boat to do with this unknown shadow? You don't know, then. Frankly, no. Well, here. Look at this book. Uh -huh. Study of the Scientific World. Open it. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be, or I'd read it to you myself. Page 72. What is this to do with the shadow which you see? Allow your friend the doctor to read the second paragraph. Oh. Well, listen to this, Rene. Sao Paulo, Brazil. A contagious madness has spread throughout Sao Paulo. The victims claim they are being possessed by creatures of darkness who feed only on milk and water. Medical servants have been rushed to their aid. But that's in Brazil, cousin. I know, I know. But the Brazilian boat sailed by my door. Possible for this. 
Whatever it is, to have escaped from the boat. Well, anything's possible, but this does seem a little improbable. But possession, that's talking of demons. This is a modern world. No one man can possess the power of ordering another's will. How little you know, cousin. Well, perhaps I am a fool of a girl, but anybody... No, not anybody, Rene. Not me, for instance. I believe in hypnotics. That's possession of a kind. Dr. Mesmer's nonsense. I don't believe in mesmerism. Well, I can prove it to you simply enough. How? If you're willing, we'll try a little experiment. You hypnotize? If you'll be a subject. Why, of course I will. That sounds like fun. Can I help in any way, Doctor? Yes, just uh, blow out the candle. All but one. Certainly. I'll leave the corner candle on. All right now, Rene, if you'll close your eyes. My eyes are closed. And try to sleep. Sleep. Eh. Uh, candles are out. All but one. Now, sleep. My dear, try to sleep. Doctor, listen. Listen to that. What? What, monsieur? It's in the room. I know it is. It's here. Next to me, watching me. Can't you hear it crying, crying? This is madness. You don't believe me, do you? Stop the experiment at once. Listen. Listen. Cousin, please. What makes you think mankind is the final answer to life? Perhaps there is a higher form of life. Form of life which can possess us and then destroy us. Isn't that possible, Doctor? Well, yes, anything is possible. Then take my word for it. Humanity is lost unless we destroy it. Look. I always carry a knife with me waiting for the time. I can destroy him. Listen. It's come for me. Come for possession of me. It's come. It's the horror. The horror, and it's come. Doctor, won't he ever wake up? He's been unconscious for over an hour. Well, it's best to let him sleep right now, my dear. This is an exhausting emotional strain for a man of his years. But what can we do? As soon as his heartbeat is normal, I'll take him back to the Paris hospital. You'll have to stay here for a few days and close the house. Just pack his belongings and bring them on to Paris as soon as you can. Anything you say, Dr. Powell. Well, come, Rene. We must let him sleep. I'll prepare the coach for the return journey. And so they left him, lying on the old bed in his room. And the shadows on the walls cast purple shadows on his gnarled hands. And the hands clutched the air and thrashed the sheets as if the old man were fighting. Fighting a being, fighting a presence, fighting for possession of his own will. The old man's face was a mask of horror. And then... The wind, that strange, unholy wind, started to sneak in the room. It oozed through the door, the keyhole, and the window. It slid to the bedside. <laughs> no, no. You're possessed, possessed and down. I know you watch me night and day. Night and day, night and day. Well, I'll get away from you. I've got to get away from you. I won't give in without a struggle. You'll have to give in because nobody believes you, believes you, believes you. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Watching you, watching you, watching you. Leave me you. alone. I'll never leave you alone. Never, never, never. But I shall be free of you. You can't be free of me. I'm part of you. If I stay here. They'll call you mad. They'll call you mad. But if I leave the house. You'll die. I'll leave you here. You can't follow me. I'll go far away. So far, nobody will find me. Oh, I've got one hand on your heart, Bouvet, and one in the room. If you leave, your heart will be torn from you, torn from your body, torn from your soul. What's it, Bouvet? Is anything the matter? I heard him scream, too. Huh? Doctor, look at him. Oh. His face is, is dead white. Yes, Rene, you're quite right. I'll have to risk moving him now. I don't think we ought to leave him in this house any longer. But how can you travel alone with him? Well, I'll manage somehow. I'll carry him to the buggy. He can sleep as we drive along. I can manage somehow. That is, if you don't mind staying here alone. Oh, I don't mind, Doctor. I have no patience with superstitious nonsense. Right. Here, my dear, help me wrap him in this blanket. Of course, Doctor. Oh, there, that's fine. Now, hand me that other blanket over there. Here you are. That'll keep him warm on the journey. I'll send the coach back from Paris tomorrow evening to pick you up. You ought to be able to leave here by then. Don't worry about me, Dr. Perron. I'll be all right. That's what she thought then. 
But even as the doctor carried the old man out of the house to the carriage, a premonition of fear, a foreboding, reached out from the gathering shadows in the walls and left her trembling and weak. The doctor placed the old man in the carriage, and then that journey and the return to Paris started. They had traveled for about an hour. The day awakened, sobbing out. You've taken me away. Away from my house, you fool. Obey, you must not excite yourself. Put his hands in my heart. He's pulling on it. Pulling on it. Doctor, take me back before I die. Nonsense, Bouvet. You must get away from that place. Take me back. Take me back, Doctor. You don't understand. Bouvet, sit down. You think I'm mad, don't you? But the hall exists. They exist, and I'll die if I don't return. Will you try to rest, Monsieur? We're doing everything we can for Turn this carriage around, Doctor. And attend to the house. Bouvet, put those reins Did down. You Let go of the reins, you fool, before you take us off the road. Turn the carriage around. Oh, I... Rachel, plunge this knife into you. Bouvet, put that knife down. Put that down. Oh, that will teach you to interfere with a hall of doctor. Oh, that will teach you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Now, get out of this carriage, Doctor. But, Bouvet... Before I plunge the dagger into your heart. Bouvet! Bouvet, you can't leave me here like this. I must like... leave you here. I... I must return to the house at once to uh, destroy him. But he doesn't exist except in your own mind, Bouvet. He exists, and I'm going to him. Bouvet! Doctor! Doctor! <laughs> Dead. I'm coming, master. Yeah, I'm coming, master. I'm coming to destroy you, just as I destroyed him. Bouvet drove off in the rambling carriage, leaving the badly wounded doctor lying on the roadside, more dead than alive. Bouvet drove furiously through the night to a little shack about a half mile from his home. There was a sign on the shack, a sign reading, Littau's expert lockmakers and iron workers. Bouvet pulled the carriage up in front of the door. He walked to the entrance of the shack. Monsieur Littau! Monsieur Littau. Who? Who's calling at this? Oh, Monsieur Beauvais. What are you doing at this hour of the night? Beauvais? Yes, yes, stay, of course. I need your help. That's what. My help? What can a poor man like me do for a wealthy man like you? You can make a lock for me. I've got to lock the doors of my house securely. The front and back doors and the windows. All the windows in my house. They must be locked and bolted, Littau. Tonight? Yes, tonight, you fool. Of course, tonight. But in heaven's name, why? Lock him out. Out of my home, out of my life. Y- you're Into not... an eternity. Y- you're not feeling well? Come, Littau. Don't bicker with me. Hurry, man. I'm prepared to pay any price you ask. Of course. She'll be as you say if you'll only just give me time to get my instruments together. Of course, but hurry, Littau. Hurry. He's waiting for me now. You see, Littau and the old man return to the lonely old house by the river in the dead of the night. They crept into the house and worked in the half-darkness near the shadows. And that strange, unholy wind was quiet and didn't disturb them while they worked. Bouvet felt safe and free for a while, only a while. And a girl slept upstairs, slept undisturbed and quiet. The hours passed this way, passed quietly, as the locksmith worked and the old man muttered. Hurry. Hurry, little girl, hurry. It's almost morning, man. I'm hurrying as fast as I can. I'm almost done, except for the windows in your cousin's room. Well, don't worry about her. I'll wake her up when the time comes. Finish that lock, man. Just two more nails. We'll hold it in place. Good, good, good. Two more nails. Two more nails. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. There you are. Gabriel, what are you doing here? Oh, good morning, youngster. Good morning, my dear. But the doctor, the doctor was to take you. Away from my house. But he couldn't, Rene. Where is the doctor? In Paris. He's going to return this evening after my work is done. Yes. Yes. 
A job in life. To kill the whole life. The doctor let you return alone? He had to let me. But I wasn't alone. Well, who is this? I'm Charlotte Tao, Mademoiselle, the most famous lockmaker in the world. I don't understand all this. Naturally, my dear. Come along, Miss Tao. Let's finish your work. Only two more locks to fix tonight. And I'll be able to lock them in and kill them. Kill them. Hell, what are you staring at me for? Go ahead to my cousin's room and start to work. Of course, I'll start right away. Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Look at me, cousin. I'm looking at you, Renee. I see you. Are you lying to me? Why should I lie to you? What did you do to the doctor? Nothing, nothing, Renee. With that knife in your belt. What about that knife in your belt? I always carry a knife to protect me against against the horror. There's blood on that knife, Gabrielle. What did you do? Be quiet, oh, Renee. Cousin. Am I all gone? I can't let you go. What are you going to do to me? I'll bind you up. Tie to a chair until I've killed him. Put you on his head. Yes, I'm old, but I'm strong, cousin. Stronger than you. Oh, no, don't struggle against me. Is everybody in trouble? I thought I heard you. You heard nothing. Nothing, monsieur. Go back to work. All right, I'm almost done. Now, come along, cousin. I'll have to tie you in the kitchen where you'll be out of harm's way until he's dead. Bouvet dragged his cousin to the kitchen, and then taking a stout rope, tied her to the kitchen table by the sheer strength of a maniac, tied her securely, and then threw a tablecloth over her. Smiling to himself, he left the kitchen and went to the upstairs room to watch Latau finish the work of the night. Are you finished, Monsieur Latau? Yes, yes, of course, yes, I'm finished. Here. Here, you are, Latau. Two hundred francs for one night's work. Good pay, isn't it? Very good pay, Monsieur Bouvet. Very good pay. Anything more I can do, sir? Have you locked the locks? All luck secured, monsieur. I'm glad. Tell us, how what are you waiting for? Why don't you go home? I, uh, I thought I ought to say good night to the There's other... There's no need to. I'll say good night for you. Listen. Do you hear that? I hear nothing. Naturally. You hear nothing. Good night, monsieur Bouvet. Peter, may I caution you against one thing? Of course. Don't tell anybody of this work tonight. Do you understand? Don't tell anybody. Of course I understand. Good night. Uh, see you in the morning. <laughs> Your locks can't lock me out. You. You again. I've been watching you and your lockmaker, watching you, and your locks are useless. Locks are useless, useless. But I can lock you in when I escape. Impossible, because I am with you constantly. And I'll destroy you, Horla. With a knife? No, with fire and flame. I'll set the entire house on fire and leave you here. Leave you here and I'll escape. You can't escape. You're part of this house, you said to yourself. Did I now? How interesting. How interesting. How very interesting. And you'll burn to death. He'll burn to death, and the world will be free of the horror. Are you so sure, Bouvet? Are you so sure? <laughs> I'll pour oil on the walls and on the rugs and on the floor. Where's the oil? In the kitchen closet. Yes, in the kitchen closet. That's where it is. Don't forget I'm part oh, of no. you. No, He'll be destroyed by fire. And while the frantic, distraught old man poured oil on the rugs and on the walls, the Tau walked slowly home, worrying about his old friend Bouvet, worrying about the strangest actions he'd ever seen, worrying and trying to fit together the odd pieces of the puzzle in his mind. Halfway home, he heard a voice cry out, Somebody help! Help before it's too late! Who is it? Oh, but it's the doctor. In oh. heaven's name, what has happened to you? Help! Oh, badly wounded. Here. Oh. Allow me to help you stand on your feet. Uh, there now. Oh, I'm so weak. What happened? The madman moved me. I was trying to take him to a hospital and he, he stabbed me. Madman? <clears throat> I thought so. I just finished making two dozen sets of locks for him and his house. Little. Is Madame Saab still there? Yes. I thought I heard her cry out, but I wasn't sure. Well, we must get help to her immediately. That madman will do anything. Anything. Little. Here, let me carry you, Monsieur. Uh, put your arm over my shoulder if you can. Uh, we'll get help as soon as possible. Hurry. Hurry, Lita. Hurry, man. Yeah. Now I've poured oil over the entire house. Yes. The entire house. The curtains, the ceiling. Even the beds and walls and the chairs. Now for a match. Yes, one match. One match in a house will go up in flames. 
flames. And you'll be dead. Uh, will I be dead? Will I? <laughs> I need a match. I need a match. Must be a match in the kitchen. In the house will all be flames. Flames. And you'll burn. Burn and die. Yes, the kitchen. Uh, yeah. Don't be nervous, cousin. Don't be nervous. Work is almost done. Almost done. We'll be dead. The hall will be dead. Dead, yes. Yes, there's a match. I'm going to start my flames on the top floor. The top floor. Don't follow me. I don't want you following me. I like to watch you. Up those stairs. Yes. Up the steps to the landing. Uh, will you enjoy watching your own funeral pyre? Uh, fire and flames. Fire and flames. Yeah, I'm almost to the top now. And then I'll strike my match. And the flames will start. How do you intend to escape? Don't forget your own escape. Yes. yes. I escape my escape. I must escape. I'll unlock the front door and run out. Just in time. And you'll be trapped. Trapped. Here we are. Now, light the match. Light the match. No, no, Bouvet. Hey, Paula. You'll die here. Be careful of yourself. Be careful of yourself. I don't want any harm to come to you, Bouvet. Look. Look. Look, the fire started. Look at the flames. Look at the walls and the shadows. Look at the flames. Now, now for the downstairs. I'm right beside you. Where you go, I go. No, no. You must stay here and die. Don't you understand? Then you will die. You will. Watch out for the flames. Watch out for the flames. I must light the match down here now. Light the canopy. Like that. Now, how do you light those flames, Ola? How do you like those flames? Be careful of yourself, Bouvet. Be careful of yourself. Now, now one last light here. And the job is done. And I'll wait and escape. At the last minute. And you'll be left. They've come to rescue me, you see, Bouvet. They've come to rescue me. No, no. I won't open up. Hurry, flames. Hurry. Come on, come beat you to the job. I tell you, the girl's in the back of the house. Break the door down. Get the girl. Where is she? She's in the back of the house. Hurry, men. They're all fools. They're allowing the hall to live. You're allowing the hall to escape. Watch out, Bouvet. I've got to go. Fools. He would have died in here. And I would have been free. I'll never leave you, old friend. And I would have been free. Never free. free me. Don't you see him? He's standing next to me. Always next to you. Always next to you. He could die in the flame. Only if you die in the flame. Watch out the house. Watch out. 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 And the old, wild-eyed man rushed into the pile of burning timber among his old belongings and perished there. He and the Horla perished there. All that remained of the man and the Horla was scorched bones and two odd, misshapen skulls. Two odd, misshapen skulls. Remember that. For there were two skulls, not one. From the time worn pages of the past, we have heard the famous story, The Caller. Bellkeeper, hold the bell. <laughs> 